Hello there, Eric here, and uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about culture, uh, namely cultural differences between nationalities, but this can also be applied to culture within corporations, culture in leadership, and uh, culture just in between groups of people. And uh, I live in Japan, I'm American, so I'm going to be incorporating my experiences between these two cultures, and I'm going to be using Gert Hofstede's cultural dimensions. If you don't know about those, Gert Hofstede uh, developed these cultural dimensions as a way to measure uh, different values and customs and uh, um, importances between cultures. And he did most of this important work working at the IBM Research Labs between 1967 and 1973, where he used these five cultural dimensions to uh, compare 70 countries around the world. And uh, today we're going to be looking at Japan and the United States. So the first dimension is uh, power distance. And this is the degree of inequality. But even more than that, it's the degree in which societies, a group of people, will tolerate big gaps in power. Uh, in organizations, you might see this more as a, uh, a vertical and less a flat organization. So some of the values you might see in there, uh, a higher power distance score might be a more centralized structure. The hierarchy is more vertical and stronger. Uh, there might be some gaps, large gaps in compensation between groups and individuals, and also gaps between authority and respect shown to certain individuals within that group. And the lower power distance score means a more flatter organization, a more flat society. Uh, supervisor employees are considered more as equals. They might get even uh, more equal pay. And as we go through this, uh, higher scores and lower scores aren't necessarily good or bad. They're just uh, a ranking to show a difference between two cultures. So keep that in mind. So a high power distance score doesn't mean that the, the organization or country is better in any way. So thinking about power distance, the extent to which a society uh, lets gaps or uh, vertical types organization rather than a flat one, which one do you think scores higher as far as power distance goes for the United States and Japan? I'll give you one second to think about that. And a lower score, again, means that uh, the group is considered more and it's more flat, a flatter organization. Well, in actuality, United States and Japan are quite similar in this regard. Um, if, For an example of its organization having a very power distance driven type organization, you can think about the military. A uh, very flat one might be a more democratic type uh, situation. And both the United States and Japan are very uh, democratic as now. So there isn't a whole lot of difference between them as far as power distance is concerned. And both of these countries rank somewhere in the middles in the 70 countries in the this decade-long study. The next one is individualism versus collectivism. So this is the strength, the bonds that tie people together in the community. Do people put the individual first, yourself first, or do they put the group first? And this is uh, sometimes the score is uh, commonly looked at as higher individuality ranking or a higher collectivism ranking. So in this context, the higher score meaning more uh, value is placed on the individual's time, the individual's freedom, uh, the respect for the individual's privacy, and the lower score is higher collectivism. So there is more emphasis and more value put on your contribution to a group and therefore you might find 
uh, an emphasis on building your skill, becoming a master at something, because it, perhaps that you may be more useful to a group if you were skilled at one thing and you might be better off as an individual if you value those being kind of a jack of all trades. So again, higher score, individualistic, lower score, more collectivistic. Which one do you think? I think this one's probably pretty easy because uh, for these two countries, these are drastically different. And if you guessed the United States being higher score here, you are correct. Um, actually, the United States is the number one in the world as scoring as far as being individualistic. And uh, Japan thinks more about the group. Uh, there's more societal pressures to be part of the group. And this all comes with uh, uh, the type of society built around in your upbringing to, be, uh, to fit in to the group. There's more of an in-group, out-group structure in Japan as well. Uh, one way I like to illustrate this is two very um, well-known sayings, one in Japan, deru togi wa utareru, and the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The first saying is translates basically into the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Uh, basically, if you want to survive, keep your head down. Don't make yourself known. Be a part of the group. Fit in, basically, is what that saying says. If you make yourself too loud, to make stick yourself out too much, you're going to get run over, as it were. And in contrast to that, the squeaky wheel gets to grease. Uh, if you complain, if you say something, if you make some, some, something known, and if you're loud enough in the States, you might just get what you want or get what you need. Next one, uncertainty avoidance. This is uh, the degree at which society is comfortable without having a strict plan of what's going to happen in the near future or without uh, knowing exactly uh, what's going to happen or going into unknown situations without uh, being able to play it by ear, as it were, or being comfortable with playing it by ear, not, not needing a fixed plan or a fixed uh, um, contingency plan, as it were. So a higher... UAI in this score would be uh, more formal, you need more rules, you need more policies, and you need to adhere to a strict structure, and uh, you want to avoid differences. And a lower UAI is a little more informal, uh, you're more accepting to risk, uh, you're more accepting to not going into something without necessarily knowing the outcome or not, not even maybe knowing how you'll get through it entirely step by step. So as, again, what do you think? The higher score, meaning you accept ambiguity, and the lower score meaning you don't. I'm sorry, it's the opposite. Um, if you want to avoid uncertainty, that's the higher score here, and that is Japan, and one of the highest scores in the world, actually. Um, one of the reasons I attribute this is Japan has some of the highest rates of natural disasters in the world. So there is a big, it's been a big part of the culture to be prepared for whatever might go wrong, and there's constant large-scale public drills, uh, everything is planned out into great detail for almost everything. And it's very uncomfortable in Japanese society to uh, even have a large budget in organizations without going over every detail very minutely. And on the, on the traverse side, the United States is fairly low on this scale, um, very easygoing as far as that's concerned. You don't need to... Uh, consider all the contingencies. Uh, it's okay to uh, take a little risk on and see what happens kind of thing, play it by ear. Next one is masculinity. And this is the degree of society and values that uh, 
places a high emphasis on the traditional male and female roles. So a higher masculinity score uh, means men are masculine and women are feminine. And this, again, this is more traditional um, sense of those words. Um, the distinction of what males are to do in society and the roles in which females fit into society are well established and uh, there isn't a lot of deviation from that. And uh, the lower scores, uh, it's more of an equal playing field. Women are in more positions of leadership and power. Uh, successful women are more admired and respected. And not only that, uh, women uh, are drawn to these things a little bit more than in a higher masculine society. Higher masculine society, women are more comfortable playing, might feel more comfortable in the traditional roles. So this one might be a little bit easier. Higher score, high masculinity, lower score, um, a little more of a uh, amb ambiguity between the sexes. So if you said Japan is high, you are correct. Um, Japan is also one of the highest in the world in this ranking. I believe they're either one or two. And uh, the, the just as an example of that, uh, in the top 50 corporations, largest corporations in Japan, there was only one or two female board members. That's in the, all of the top 50 uh, country, uh, organizations in Japan. And I believe that company is Sony and that woman is actually a foreigner, not Japanese. And in the States, uh, it's a little more equal as far as that's concerned. Women are going for more uh, leadership roles and uh, are, uh, we see a little bit more house husbands and things like that in the States. Uh, next is long-term orientation. So this is a short-term view or a long-term view. Which one is more important to focus on? Uh, if you're a higher long-term uh, oriented type society, you're going to put more emphasis on things that will pan out in the long run, things that are better in the long run. Uh, that usually comes down to importance on things like education, training, uh, infrastructure, uh, family, and uh, also a stronger work ethic because uh, you're, you don't need necessarily see uh, rewards for what you're doing right away. And on the a lower score in this sense would mean uh, a little more creativity and individualism and more looking at short-term goals, more short-term uh, rewards from what you're getting at. And uh, think about Japan and the United States again, which one do you think is more long-term orientated? Again, Japan is, uh, and, and the United States differ for this very greatly. Japan, just as an example here, uh, the average savings of the average person in Japan is one of the top in the world. Uh, J average Japanese person will have a large amount of money in their savings account in the bank. And I believe in the United States, the average is negative. Uh, the average American does not have any savings. The average American has quite a bit of debt. So that's just one thing uh, looking in the long term. Um, also, in, Americans are a little more concerned with the quarterly report, a little more concerned with uh, the election cycle, and uh, Japan's a little more concerned with uh, what's going to happen in the long run. It might be also connected to the age of these two societies as well. There is, I said in the beginning, there is actually five uh, dimensions, but there was a sixth added since I last looked at this uh, three or four years ago, and that is the idea of indulgence. And this is a sixth dimension, uh, fairly new, and it's the extent to which people in a society, people within that society control people to curb their own impulses and desires. So 
a higher indulgence, a higher score in this sense, would be that you're free to enjoy life. Society doesn't uh, restrain you in any way. Uh, you can uh, look for instant gratifications. There are less, there are looser social norms on uh, you going after what you want to do. And a lower score in here would be a higher level of constraint. You're self-constrained. Society is telling you to self-constrained. You want to curb your gratification, and the social norms are a bit more strict. So higher indulgence, lower score, meaning restraint. So what do you think now? If you said the United States is more likely to indulge, you are correct. Uh, Japan uh, is a little more likely to uh, curb yourself or uh, shut yourself off or because the, there's an idea of saving face a lot more in Japan. You don't want to look like um, you're taking out, it goes with the group analysis that I put earlier. You don't want to stick out. You don't want to look like you're uh, having too much fun uh, because we're all supposed to be, you know, in it together kind of idea. And to illustrate this, we got the now generation. Uh, this is going along with uh, the technology these days. We need instant gratification in the States and we want it now and we want it right away. Uh, moving more and more towards this as we move along, being able to, for example, fast food and order things and receive the next day on the internet. Uh, on the other side of things, there's this phrase or a concept, more of a concept really, and that is gaman suru. Um, suru is do, gaman translates as patience, but uh, it's more than that. It's willful patience. It's holding yourself back on purpose for the good of uh, either the long term or the good of the group. It's um, self-restraint in a way. And this term is uh, widely used all over Japan. It's very hard to be translated into English. And I think it kind of exemplifies this idea of a uh, less indulgent society here in Japan. And just to compare these once again, uh, power distance, um, United States, a little bit lower. Individualism, Japan, uh, United States, top number one, <laughs> America number one. Uh, masculinity, Japan number one in the world. Uncertainty avoidance, big uh, gap there between the two cultures. Uh, short term versus long term, huge gap between these two societies. Indulgence and uh, restraint, also not so big, but a little bit of a difference there too. And uh, one thing to start thinking about is how this might affect how you do business in these two countries, how these organizations will be built in these two countries. Um, if you want to discuss that further, I invite you to look in the description and uh, watch for further videos. All right, again, this is Eric Hawkinson talking about cultural dimensions, and I'll see you next time.